Right, so I'm so glad um, Rahu, that you asked the question of what are some complications that students and instructors face when they're teaching online? Um, and I know at the onset of COVID, everyone <laughs> had issues because they had to switch to an online modality really, really quick. And so I totally, totally understand. So I hope that all of you um, during my session today, that you can take at least one thing away. Um, and I know it says 10 activities, but I have a surprise for you. I have more than 10 <laughs> so that I, hopefully there'll be a little bit for everyone. So let's get started. Um, so hello, my name is Teresa Wynn. Um, my last name is very easy to pronounce. It's like a win-win situation. I've had it <laughs> pronounced like a thousand different ways. So it's Teresa. Um, so currently right now I am the department chair um, as well as full-time faculty here at my local community college. And one of the things I was very fortunate um, to have done was to start a whole ESL. So we have an ESL program and I was actually hired on um, to do a, to start a whole new non-credit program. And this is what I wanna to touch upon because it was this special group that we grew from only 30 students to 2000 students. And with COVID, and with COVID, we had to quickly switch online. And not surprisingly, a lot of programs um, here, they actually shut down because of low student enrollment. However, we were actually able to maintain our student enrollment. And so we not only did we not close, but we kept our enrollment. And so I'm very happy to share some of the activities and strategies that I tried and worked. <laughs> um, and hopefully you can use this in your own careers. So one of the things I found most helpful in any classroom is classroom management. <laughs> you know, when you're in person, it's really easy to have classroom management because you're there, they're there. It's really easy. However, when you're in this online environment, it's kind of hard. I mean, instructors, just like you said before, you feel like you're talking to yourself. And also, you know, there are a thousand black boxes looking at you, <laughs> right? It's like, who am I talking to? Ah, black boxes. So black box A, black box B, right? But however, one of the things that most students complain and instructors alike is, oh my God, how do I get students to just talk and mute and unmute? So one of the best strategies I found were creating these cards. Sometimes I call on like students come in and I mean, all of us, we forget. Me too. So sometimes if I want everyone to be quiet, I'm like, look, right here, right here. Or I tell students, oh, I can't hear you. Can you just press this? So, so, so easy. Just laminate them. Like so, so easy, but the best, the best classroom management, I think. Um, so this is my bonus advice, okay? <laughs> it's not included in the 10 activities for you. And as I'm going through the presentation today, please, please feel free to ask questions. I love questions. So please, at any time, you don't have to wait for the last 10 minutes, feel free to ask me. And I'm pretty sure Rahu or anyone would be more than happy to address them. All right. So my first activity for you is guess who? And um, in my classroom, and I don't know how your classroom is, so as a, you know, just kind of as a preference, these work for my classroom. And perhaps you might have to manipulate it depending to your classroom, your subject matter, et cetera, et cetera. So one of the first thing I like to do in my classroom is that, uh, well, in my classroom, we, I like to have really good rapport with my students. I think as long as you have really good rapport with your students, you will have good student retention. They will stay, right? Because you have a good relationship with them they won't disappear on you. And so one of my favorite activities I like to do before class is something called guess who. So before class starts, um, you know, so before when class starts, um, I would email my students, hi, welcome to Teresa's, you know, communication class or grammar class, pronunciation class. Hello. So before class, if you don't mind, send me a sentence about yourself. Right, and so I don't have to just send a sentence. You know, I don't expect much. And plus you don't have a lot of time anyways. 
Um, and so before class, they send me like a one sentence information about themselves. And then in the first day of class, I'm like, okay, class, so I want to get to know all of you. And I'm pretty sure you want to get to know each other as well. And so what you do is you have those sentences that they sent into you, you would just read it. And it would be the students responsible to guess who it is in their class, like which classmate it is. And I found that to be, you know, they love it. You all love it, I guess. So it's kind of like that. Okay, my next activity, raise your hand. Now, my students, I also have, I also have to also say, in my students, I always, always recommend my students to show me their videos. I'm like, class, I know you want to be a black box, but trust me, if you want to improve in your pronunciation, I need to see your mouth. Ah, uh, if you want to, <laughs> for me to actually help you, it's best if I see your face. But I totally understand if you have five children running in the background, that's fine. We want to see a black box too, right? <laughs> so it kind of depends on their part, but I really, really encourage my students to show me their videos. Um, so this activity, I also really love it. Now, this is really easy to manage in a Zoom environment because it's just hands. And so you can just kind of look around. Um, and so I would have a list of varying experiences. I would make a list for them. We would go over the meanings, the definitions, things like that. Or you can even solicit activities from students. And we would play this activity where, okay, raise your hand. So like, raise your hand. If you've gone skydiving, right? You can see all the thousand hands or zero hands. <laughs> um, raise your hand if you have more than four children. That's usually no hands. <laughs> so this is an activity that I love. It gets a student, you know, engaging and looking for their classmates. The next activity is something called a virtual tour. Now, as you can see, you know, when you're online, it's really hard to kind of, you know, really communicate with people. So you can put them in breakout rooms if you have a large classroom or if it's just um, or if you have a smaller classroom, this is great. So I always have them do some speaking. So this is a really great for speaking. So you're giving a virtual tour of the room you're calling from. So say, for example, right here, right now, I'm like, well, I'll be like, okay, da, da, da. so for example, I'm still be like, Teresa, can you show me your room? <laughs> I'll be like, yes, teacher. So I'll be like, hello, everyone. This is my closet. This is my floor. That's my wedding picture, something like this. So it's, it's really nice to just um, have them open up their personal space. So wherever they may be, um, to get them engaged in the current surrounding. So bringing the current surrounding into the classroom. And I think it's very enriching, it's very different, and it allows them to use a lot of different vocabulary, actually. And sometimes you'll have students be like, what's that? What do you have there? Why, you know, so it's, it does, um, you know, instigate questions. This is one of my favorite activities. So as a teacher, uh, this is called showtime. <laughs> and so for this, probably um, it's asking them to not just sit there. So I don't know if you can tell, but for me in my classes, even for me myself, when someone lectures too much, I kind of fall asleep, right? <laughs> so I like my students to be active and engaging as this you know, as today's presentation. So one of my favorite activities here is called Showtime. And um, with learning English, I'll probably teach them some sentences. So I gave you some examples here. Um, just won the lottery, had the best idea ever, saw the love of your life, found ten dollars on the ground, something like this. So how this works is, I'll tell them, all right, students, you're gonna move out of the frame like this. <laughs> And when you come back, you're going to show me expressions or faces of this, right? So I'll be like, for example, all right, class, <laughs> come back as though you just won the lottery. 
something like that, okay? I'll be like, okay, again, class, all right? <laughs> Come back as though you just saw the love of your life. <sighs> Whatever it may be. So the students are crazy. Like, trust me, you will be shocked at how some crazy students are. <laughs> and it just, you know, it just brightens everyone's day, you know. And to be honest, I'll give you a little secret. It's always the quiet ones in class that are the craziest in this activity. <laughs> like the ones that you never, ever expect, they have the best expressions. <laughs> um, so yes, this is called showtime. All right, so, you know, so I don't know about wherever you're teaching, but here at the community college, um, our classes are 16 weeks at a time. So, you know, in the beginning of the semester, like the first few weeks, they love Teresa. Oh yeah, Teresa, I can't get enough of you. I wanna see you every day. I'm never gonna miss class. I am early. Oh my gosh, Teresa, you are amazing. And then towards like the middle of the semester, they're kind of like, all right, Teresa, I see you for like eight weeks, <laughs> you know, and I'm getting kind of tired. It's not you, it's me and life balance, right? <laughs> Something like this. And then towards the end of the semester, they like disappear. <laughs> you probably have like a few stragglers left, right? And so to spice up, and especially if you're on Zoom, you know, I think you've all heard of the special term, Zoom fatigue right and so in my semester to kind of spice up our everyday classes um i would have something called spirit days <laughs> so here in this picture you will see i had hat day so i was like okay class october 15th it's hat day and so on october 15th everybody just choose a hat any hat i don't care what hat just wear a hat where, and then how do we start class? You talk about why did you choose this hat? <laughs> That's it. So for example here, you know, <laughs> and it's really crazy, but you know, I just wear my summer hat, my favorite summer hat. She wear her only daughter's helmet. So she's a single mom and she wear her daughter's hat and, and her helmet. She's like, you know, I had my child at a later age and I love her so much. You see, so you actually learn a lot. Like for here, we never learned this. This gentleman here, he said, ah, oh, he said, I used to be a bee catcher or like a honey catcher or whatever. So he, he has this because he would get honey. And I'm like, what, really? <laughs> you know, so you, you like, you learn stuff you never realize. And my student here, He's like, Teresa, I made this hat. I went to Dollar Tree. I grabbed, which is like, my nice. I don't know if you guys got that, but here we have, this so is just like a cheap store. He got a bunch of stuff and he actually made his own hat. And he's like, Teresa, I better win an award for this. I'm like, yes, <laughs> you did. <laughs> so he made his own hat. So it's really creative. Like you never know, it's just a hat to you, but you never know the story behind it. And I think, for, for, you know, for this online environment, for them to be engaged, you have to get them to open up and share their story, you know, and some, and sharing their hat is not too, like, you never think it's personal, but it kind of ends up being personal, right? Like, you wearing your daughter's helmet, like, wow, so what did I learn from her? I learned, ah, she's a single mom with a young daughter, right? Like, you just never know. You never know. So Spirit Days, everyone, I highly recommend it. It's really cool. So I gave some suggestions. Hat day, sunglasses day, workout day. It's a day where I can actually wear workout clothes, <laughs> which I wear every day, but you know. <laughs> America Day, Christmas, Inside Out. So, you know, these are just some suggestions for you. Okay. Um, my next activity here, or the next one I have is like a virtual background. So, you know, with Zoom, you can change your background, right? And so for class, I'll be like, okay, students, 
choose a picture, any kind of picture, make it your virtual background. And then we talk about it. Why? Why did you choose this virtual background? Right? Oh, so for example, if they have like the Golden Gate Bridge, oh, my dream is to go to the Golden Gate Bridge or, you know, or I love or, or I just went to the Golden Gate Bridge with my family, something like that. I mean, you all, there is a reason behind your decision, right? And so this is just a chance for them to explain the reasoning as to why they made this decision. And so this is also something very easy. So, and of course, it's not just any virtual background. I usually have a topic. So for example, place you want to visit, favorite movie or cartoon, favorite food or dessert, my favorite topic, I eat 24 <laughs> seven. Something that makes you happy. This was a very, very popular topic. I got the most random thing. So as their virtual background, they have to choose something that makes them happy. And I got everything from like candles to like bubbles to like randomness. <laughs> okay. But of course, please remind your students, please be appropriate. PG-13. You don't want any, you know. And then we're like a favorite city, right? How are we doing so far, everyone? Everyone's good? Yes? Great. I am so glad. All right, next one. Let's do it. This is one of my favorite. I can't say they're all favorite. Notice I'm saying favorite to all like 15 of these. <laughs> so anyways, this is also another favorite. <laughs> um, this activity is called Let's Do It. Let's do it. And Gosh, I really wish I could see all of your faces so we can do this because then you kind of get the idea. So I will try to be a million people so you know what I mean. So one person says something and I, that everyone can do. So say, for example, let's, um, so they will say something, for example, I'll be like, let's do it. And then everyone will see the video and they'll be like, let's do it. And then everyone in the class does it. And then you call the next person. You'll be like, okay, Bob. And then Bob will be like, let's do it. And then everyone will say, let's do it. Yeah. Now, I know there's probably like no English going on with this activity, <laughs> but it will get them awake. So if your class is like two hours, this is a good exercise to insert at like after one hour, okay? Or if you're like me teaching at seven o'clock in the morning, you know, you might wanna do this first before you start your grammar lesson on past perfect, like who cares, right? So let's do this first, okay? So, you know, the activities that I give you today, Perhaps they don't have a lot of English going on, but it'll get them engaged in the English that you're going to teach. Okay, so just kind of keep that in mind. It all helps with your English, you know, skills. I mean, your English teaching skills, I'm sure. All right, next activity. This one has a lot of English going on, and I suggest you do this with an English level of intermediate at least, so intermediate and up. These are all story starters. So as a class, you're going to build a story and spontaneously. Or if you want, you can give them a few minutes to prepare, but whatever. I like to do this spontaneously. It helps them use all the English that they don't think they know that they have, okay? So say, for example, I'll be like, okay, Student A, so student A will be, once upon a time in a forest far, far away. <laughs> okay, student B, next sentence here. Every day there was a bear that, I don't know, ate honey. <laughs> okay, student C, until one day the bear didn't want to eat honey anymore. So you can see how it goes. Each student 
is building on the story. And these are just, and right here are just sentence starters for them to help them continue the story, right? And it just keeps on going and going and going, 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 going. Now, if you have a million students, this is the repeat sentence. And because of that, da -da -da -da, and because of that, something like that. And then eventually you finish the story. Yeah. So this one, like, it's funny, it kind of depends on how the story goes, but most of the time, the story becomes out of hand. <laughs> it just becomes a really crazy story, but it's, it's fun. How long does the story go? That's a very good question. So how long does the story go? It kind of depends on you. You don't have to use all your students. You can use, just say, hey, today we're going to do a story builder, first five volunteers. Okay, the first 10 volunteers, something like that. So you want the all of these activities, please feel free to ask me how you can manipulate it to fit your classroom. These all of these activities can go as long as you want, as short as you want for any kind of subject matter, right? It's all up to you as the instructor and how you you incorporate it into your lesson plans. Thank you for the question, Eric. Okay, students, how are you feeling right now? You know, I know you've been sitting down. I think I'm about halfway through my presentation. So why don't we take about a 30 second break <laughs> to stand up, exercise, you know, stretch, right? You can't sit there all the time. So go ahead, everybody, get up stand up move around that's right dance party that's right that's right thank you that's it that's all this one is play some music make your students stand up and dance for 30 seconds and they are good to go for the second half of your boring class <laughs> just joking it's not boring i'm pretty sure you guys are all wonderful wonderful instructors and your classrooms are very engaging right I find these 30 second dance parties really, really helpful, really helpful. And sometimes the dance parties are um, not only helpful for the, for the students, but for yourself as well. Sometimes you just need a break, right? Too much English can kind of drive you crazy. All right, so please use this 30 second dance party break. How to stop after 30 seconds, you press stop. <laughs> playing unless you meant another question but usually when the music stops everyone stops dancing so yes all right okay let's move on to my next one my next one is something called a chat party a chat party okay so my student i'm oh, sorry so, hold on see i have it all right so <laughs> um so a chat party it actually sounds a lot cooler than it is basically when i say chat party i just tell everyone to hey prepare to type your answers in the chat you know so when you have a lot of students when you have a lot of students it's really hard to get instant feedback right or sometimes um it's just like one student at a time sometimes you're calling one student at a time but i don't want that i want everyone to be involved so i'll be like okay everyone chat party Everyone knows, okay, they're going to open up the chat at the same time. I'm like, okay, type for me. What's your favorite season? And then you can see, ah, oh, spring, fall, blah, blah, blah. Like everyone is engaged and typing in their answers and everyone can see. Now, you can do these for questions, but to be honest, you can also do this for test questions. Sometimes when we're going over test questions, I want to know, like, how did you do? So I'll read out the test questions. I want to type in your answers. I'm like, chat party. Okay, so I'll put up a test question. Everyone types their answer in the chat box. And I'll be like, ooh, a lot of you guys got this wrong. I'll be like, oh, good job, class. Most of you guys got this right. Right. So it's a great way to check, you know, what's going on in your class. Or if they're even awake, say so you got 30 students, but you get like two people in the chat party, you know that party is not, mm -mm, it's a boring party. So you're going to be like, students, <laughs> this party is not happening. You guys need to type some more in the chat party, right? Chat party can't just be me and you, right? Something like this. So, 
Okay, this is one of my favorite, favorite activities. Well, they're all my favorite activities. That's why I'm introducing them to you. Um, so this next one here is called a grab, show, and tell. Grab, show, and tell. Now, I did this for a lesson. So we were doing a food lesson. And so I said, you know, grab the nearest food item to you, show, and share. So, you know, I love to eat. So I always have food around me when I'm teaching. Like, so right now I'll be like, okay, just grab something. So it's one second. They're not spending days looking for something, okay? So it's just like, grab something, show me and tell me. So I just be like, here we go. I'm like, Teresa is very old. She needs to take her women's multivitamin gummies every day <laughs> so that she can be healthy and young and happy to teach all of you, okay? And she likes gummies because it tastes like gummy bears. It doesn't taste like, you know, medicine, right? So something like this, right? So that you just grab it, you show it, and you talk about it. So easy, so convenient. We can do this in the beginning of class. You can do this for a topic that you're talking about. So my topic was about food. Grab a food item, right? Um, so anything, you know, whatever that you want to do. So please. Now, I know a lot of you are familiar with the game tag. You're it. You know, kids, they're running. They play tag. And the next person run. But no. This is actually my way of having students call on each other by themselves. So say, for example, we're reading a passage, I'm sharing a reading passage. Instead of me choosing who's going to read, I'll be like, okay, student A, you read. Oh, thank you. Student B, you read. Student C, you read. No. So sometimes I make the students read. So I'll be like, okay, we're going to do tag you it. Student A will read. La 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 la. Then they'll be like, "Student B, tag, you're it." Student B will read. Da 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 da. And then they'll be like, "Student C, tag, you're it." And then Student C will continue to read. So this is just a nice way of making the students choose the next student to read or to do the activity. So say we're going over answers or something like that. So instead of me choosing. It's a student that is choosing, and sometimes they will choose their friends, which is even better because they don't care if their friend usually participates or not. <laughs> they just choose a name or, you know, so it makes everyone, um, it makes everyone more scared. Like, ooh, am I going to get, you know, uh, picked on or something like that? So this is just a nice way to do that. All right. This is also a really cool one. So for this next activity, it's called I Spy, I Spy. So, you know, you can see everyone's background, right? So for right now, you can see my background, but usually um, if you know, and this really helps with their English. So, you know, when you have the full screen, you can see everyone's faces. So you can see the different backgrounds. So you must be something like, I spy a yellow banana on a yellow shelf and then everyone's like you see everyone's face like really close like this <laughs> because they're trying to look who has a yellow banana in their background because you're looking for things and they're like oh you know they're like well, who has a yellow banana in his background right something like this and they're like okay and then well, who would go something like that okay so this is like i spy and it helps them to really see things and create sentences from what they see, you know? So I see that you know, a lot of our students, their English knowledge is vast, but to pull that English knowledge and to actually use it, that's a whole nother level of struggle, <laughs> right? Like they're like, oh, I have all this English, but it's really hard for them to use it. And so this is one of the ways for them to use it. They're like, I spy, you know, like, oh, like three red books on a shelf something like this, okay? And then everyone's like, ooh, who has a red book on the shelf? Something like this, okay, so I spy. So it just talks about, you know, looking and listening and hearing and seeing and creating sentences from what they have. Okay, like this, I like to, I like to be entertained. <laughs> and my students are really good, they just don't know it. 
And so we always have a talent show every semester. You know, a talent show would be like, I mean, you know, most of them sing songs, they play the guitar, you know, it, there's all kinds of crazy talent you never know. And so I want to show you this picture because this is my student last semester. You see the student of mine? He's 70 years old. He does yoga every morning at 5 a.m. And look at this, his leg, he was, so his talent show was to put his leg like <laughs> behind his neck. And I was like, whoa, I was like, namaste. <laughs> because it was like a whole nother level of talent. So you see, you never know what kind of talent you will get. And you know, it gets students talking, they're shocked. They get to like, whoa, Vance, you are so talented. When did you learn how to do this? How often do you practice? Like, it's like a whole conversation that we have. So, and please don't pressure your students to do talents. Like for me, I have no talent. So I would not want anyone to, you know, force me to do any kind of talent. So it's all voluntary, but, it's really nice to have a talent show because there are students that love to be stars and they want to be stars. And so this is a chance for them to shine, you know, to just show you what they got or what they're good at. I had a woman cook something. She's like, this is my talent. I'm a, I'm a good cook. <laughs> I'm a very good cook. I make this fresh from scratch. Not like Teresa who buys it pre-made and stick them in the microwave. <laughs> I'm like, okay. <laughs> okay. So. All right, so here we are, and my last one, because we're coming to a close. Uh, my time is up soon. Okay, so this is one of my favorite ones. This is called Best Friends. So I don't know what the culture difference here, but here as best friends, usually you have like a secret handshake, right? So like, ta, 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 woo, something secret handshake. So here for this um, activity, I put them into breakout rooms as pairs, and then together they must talk, they must talk and create a secret handshake, right? A secret handshake or like a winning dance, something. They must create something um, that only them two know, right? It's a private in a private room. And then after that, I pull them back. I pull them back and then they share it with the class. And it's really cool to see them do it because you'll see these two people doing something exactly the same. So, you know, it's just an activity for them to do. It's a way to have a conversation in English you know, when they're doing something private. Thank you, everyone.